Okay, you guys, we might not have been clear yesterday with all the fiasco of our arrival about where we are and what we're doing here. So you might be surprised. Take it away. We're at a different ocean. Not <laughs> even the Atlantic anymore. We're not in the Gulf of Mexico anymore. This is the Pacific Ocean. We have arrived in Santa Cruz, California. <laughs> and uh, this is where I grew up. And uh, we're actually paying for parking this time because we hadn't... Uh, I know. There's no only, place to boondock. For only the third time in our whole history. Right. You know, there, there's actually... It's illegal to sleep in your car or a vehicle in Santa Cruz, California, which is kind of a bummer because there's a huge homeless population here. But it is a wonderfully beautiful place. And, and I, we're here to see Mike's dad. That's right. And, well, then, we'll, then we're heading to Hollister to see sister and that's her husband right. and family, too. So, so but, but we are enjoying it here, but it is a little bit chilly, unfortunately. But ah, you can't beat the views, man. Right out the front window, this is what we see. And it's yeah. It's absolutely beautiful. So Yeah, it is. It's Come along here. with us on our little journey today. but I call him dad too. <laughs> Hello everybody, come on in. <laughs> Thanks. So we're down here, my dad goes for a walk every day and he's uh, he's in better shape than all of us put together. Yeah, and we love hey, where he walks though, it's so beautiful. got a plastic bag put over your head. <laughs> he's trying to get And he's a joker. <laughs> but anyway, we're going for a walk with him today and his walk, he does uh, three miles a day, he's a beast. <laughs> He's 80 years old. He goes for a walking walk every single day, three miles, except when it's raining or something. Down into the left from the bird, just barely down into a seal out on seal rock and a bird can you see the seal
Stand with Ukraine. Oh, something that's changed in this town is the traffic. And it is... Not a good change. It's 2 o'clock right now in the afternoon and the traffic has... Uh, that's the one thing that's changed the most in this town is the traffic. There's so much more traffic. And the, the, the separation between uh, rich and poor. You know, this, this place has become an extremely, extremely rich place to live. And uh, all the shops demonstrate you go in there and everything is just priced in the realm of ridiculous. Like, there's, you just wouldn't shop there. You're probably going to be a grand there. 40% cheaper someplace else. Look, we have a Santa Cruz board shop apparel place. You can get all your... Oh, you need to replace your t-shirt. Is it this arm? <laughs> we just noticed this today on his last Santa Cruz t-shirt. Yeah. From what, four years ago when Kelly got married? Yeah, is that four years ago? Wow. I guess so, so yeah. Yep, time Guess for we'll any... need to be paying a visit there. Or the one up on 41st where we got my, jet, my uh, sweater. Okay, my, my your sweetie. choice, my hones. Whichever one you want to shop Maybe at. I'll get a colorful one instead of black this time. No, we should <gasps> shop at this one this time so, so I can go in these stores that I can't afford. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know what I'm even thinking right now. That's I don't shop at boutiques. I'm a Target girl. Hey, what about that um, thrift store you were going to take me to? Yeah, I have to do that after terrible lunch. Yeah, let's just go hang out with your dad and make dinner the priority. We can do that another time. Have we been there before? Definitely. Yeah, I remember two different ones we've been to around here. The typical one with all the glass front on it, that's just the one story Strip one. Strip one, yeah. Yeah, and then there's like a split level kind that's of two story one. Saying, uh, See, I know my thrift stores all across the nation. <laughs> she's very thrift story. <laughs> very thrifty. I'm a very thrifty girl. She's a bum. She's a very thrifty girl. That girl's a super thrifty. And sing it. Super thrifty. She's super thrifty now. <laughs> super thrift. Super thrift. She's girl's super, super thrifty. Thrift. <laughs> She's a very thrifty girl. <laughs> that girl's a super thrifty. <laughs> New theme song. She dresses kind of like a hobo. You know, I think it falls into the realm of kind of like a hobo. <laughs> I think it falls into the realm of super finder when you can walk into a thrift store and walk out with the one like expensive nice item out of the whole store right, right. there's some skill involved That's not a surfable wave. No, <laughs> not unless you want a mouthful of sand. It'll be a good skinboarding day here, actually. This would be a good day to, like, if you watch in the, uh, if you watch just on the far side of the, uh, of the white water, you might find, you'll see like a little commotion, there, and those are bait fish. Oh, really? Yeah, and they'll usually be scared to the surface by striped bass. And so in those areas along, you'll see fishermen 
like walking up and down here just looking um, for looking for that and they'll cast into it. Activity. This guy here is probably doing that. Huh, I didn't know there was that much going on with surf fishing. I thought you just threw it out and it was done. Yeah, it just depends on the fish you're going for. You got surf perch here, you got striped bass here, and I'm sure there's a plethora of other little fish that live right just in the right in just the edge of the white water here, a foot or two of water. Huge. Okay. That was a big surprise in Texas. So there's a massive ecosystem ecosystem in the first hundred feet of water there. That's and amazing. some of them are you, sharks. And you don't even know there's anything there. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. Have you filmed that boat already? Yeah, I was just gonna say, what is the scoop on the whole ship out here? We haven't filmed it yet. If I remember correctly, look, you see that part, like the front part, that thing sticking up? Uh-huh. The thing sticking up is the bottom, the boat's turned over on its side. That part's uh... broken and fall tilted over. It used to just be boat yeah. all the way out. Yeah. Where all the birds are. away. And when did it run ashore here? Like, what's the story behind it? Okay, uh, here we go. Was it built World War II? Hey, this is, uh, this was the SS Palo Alto, and it was built in 1919, it turns out. Oh. And, let's see here. The construction of concrete in 1919. It was made of concrete, which goes against anything you'd believe in. It was hauled out to the seafront in 1929. Uh, it, for a while it was a, uh, uh, they had a restaurant out here, but it became too unsafe and then they just turned it into a kind of a fishing pier. And when I was a kid, you could kind of see that area about in the center of, center of the ship there. And we used to be able to walk all the way out to there. We'd fish on that platform, but as you can see now, it's not even connected to the wharf anymore. It's so destroyed. So in the period of 30 years, it's degraded fantastic yeah and that front part's turned over yeah it's like a whole different tackle than what I had. yeah if I lived here then I would get back into doing like my autonomous vehicle research stuff I used to build UAVs for a living and I was like one of the chief engineers and and um, but I always wanted to do an unmanned boat because you don't have to worry about altitude you know, you're just work, working in two axes, generally speaking. And so you could make a boat that could potentially sail around the world all by itself. So, like, that would be a ton of fun just to work on. Huh, some dolphins out there. Um, $30. He's nerding out again, you guys. I don't know how to stop this. <laughs> Look, dolphin. We've been having a great morning, though. This It isn't the sunniest day. It's been sunny every day we've been here until today. Dolphins. But, uh, yeah, they're, oh, I dolphins. see them. bagels and cream cheese and coffee this morning and now we're on our morning walk which by the way Mike's dad he has a name I introduced him as dad the other day but Mike's dad's name is actually Stephen King <laughs> but um, what was I gonna say but he's the healthiest guy we know he goes walking twice a day every single day and he eats a very healthy diet this guy is planning to live forever so I guess we can yeah, say goodbye to the inheritance. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Henry. <laughs> okay, if they had heard that, they would be laughing too. So what's with all this health stuff, Dad? This walking twice a day and eating such a healthy diet? Are you planning on living forever so we don't get an inheritance? Well, at least to be 150. <laughs> I'm only middle aged right Clearly. now. Clearly. And uh, <laughs> this is ridiculous. That's for sure. <laughs> I started walking just to get out of the house because my wife had passed away and I just wanted to get out of the house. And now if I get to walk along Santa Cruz down on East Cliff Drive and watch the ocean and the people and the surfers and the waves, I love it. It's perfect. And now he's healthier than us. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely healthier than us. Definitely. I was in a red curve one time. That's like my biggest nightmare. <laughs> She just loves it. She helps him see on it too? Um, I think there is. You can watch what's there because they have a limited selection of when it's smaller. But the. Uh,
My first experience at the ocean was here on the Pacific Coast um, in Newport Beach, California, a little south from here. But um, so I thought that the way it was at these beaches was how it is at all beaches all the time. I didn't know there could be such differences. Like even in the waves, there's only like one wave that rolls and breaks here. But when we were on Padre Island in Texas, there was three sets of waves all the time because there's three sandbars at the bottom. So I just had no idea it could be so different like that. Yeah. Right? Did you know or did you think that? I knew that. You yeah. did? But I'm familiar with you know, growing up surfing, you just know how to like read the waves and the sandbars and all that stuff. Yeah. I've been um, on the Atlantic Ocean too in New Jersey and in Newport, Rhode Island, but I don't think I really paid attention. It seems like it was only one wave at those beaches too. But I was young and I didn't know. Oh, and I've been at the ocean in Mexico too. What's that called up inside the Sea of Cortez? In the, in the Sea of Cortez. There's so no there's no waves there. It's just flat and shallow. Like you have to walk a mile to get in water deep enough to swim in some places. But yeah, this has been fun coming from one beach to another, from one ocean to another. It's been really interesting. I find it interesting. They named the ocean Pacific, which means peaceful. And it's uh, anything but is le the least peaceful <laughs> ocean in the world. I know these waves. Oh, that's the other thing too. These waves are way bigger, higher, scarier, meaner waves. And these aren't even big waves here. This is like a, <laughs> a small swell. And uh, you can see the, the way the waves are breaking here. How they uh, um, they just come to the shore and break because it's a very steep, uh, steep sandbar right here. So just kind of not even sandbar, just steep the way the the ocean rolls off underneath. And so the waves just come up and then boom, right on shore, where in yeah. other places there's reef and stuff, so you get the yeah. peeling waves that surfers like better. There's more of a crash here than in Texas. Well, let's go see Dad. All right, let's do it. Well, this is our last day in Santa Cruz because our time here has run out at the campground. And uh, kind of sad because we're leaving my dad behind, but uh, we're just going over to Hollister to visit my sister who lives there and that's only like an hour away and I th I'm, I'm sure my dad's gonna come out for a visit while we're there and uh, so we can all uh, get together and have a family dinner which will be really cool and uh, you know it's funny because since we've been here we haven't done anything Santa Cruz we've just done we haven't done we haven't done anything Santa Cruz. We've just hung out with my father, which is really great because, you know, I don't get to see him that often. That's what and we came here for. Exactly. And since, we, you know, I grew up here, you know, it's not, I feel like I've missed something because I kind of uh, have experienced all that Santa Cruz has to offer. So, but uh, um, what a, like a refreshing, great visit with my dad and everything. It's been really great. He's doing super good. So that feels well. So we're going to head up there, take some showers and uh that way we don't have to do anything Long, with our water hot showers. <laughs> and then we're gonna get on the road out Can't to hollister <laughs> there's a 5k going on a 5 or 10k we're going called surfer's path just kind of happened to catch it today they're good for them look at them go you're winning at life <clears throat> oh yeah right over there was where we almost got swept away in the ocean <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When the tide was coming in like really hard and fast and we were up too close to it and me, me and Mike and another guy were running for our lives and we had to leap up this, I'm not kidding, three foot high ledge to get out and I didn't think I was going to make it. I thought I was going to trip and fall and get sucked into the ocean <laughs> and we all made it but barely. Yeah, that was... We barely made it. That wasn't this trip. That was actually here. It was very stormy and the yeah, waves that was, were significantly bigger. It was when we were here for Kelly's wedding. That's and right. So, yeah, and there, yeah, there was some kind of storm stuff coming in, so the waves were significantly meaner than usual. That was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. And the funny thing is we were out there in the sand that we were walking on when we were out there. It was damp, but not like, you know, wet. We weren't walking in the, in the, the break zone or anything, and all of a sudden this rogue wave just comes through and the water rushed up like... 100 yards higher than a normal Yeah, day. yeah, it was because you had the camera. We were out there taking pictures. That's right. Yeah, and you were trying to keep the camera dry. Yeah, we were sprinting. And then I was also afraid 
if I didn't, because I was first, like I was in the lead, I was running fast, I was scared. <laughs> so I was afraid that I was gonna trip on the ledge and fall down and then make somebody behind me trip too. <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to handle the guilt. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. <laughs> I know, it was hilarious. Oh gosh, if someone would have been there filming that, oh, that been it would have been epic. Yeah. You guys, it's literally like we've stepped back in time to, I don't know, 1963? Where do you suppose that, what era was that sign from? <laughs> We're at the Snow White Drive-In. I don't even know how many years this place has been a fixture in Santa Cruz but we're about to find out how their food is. So she wants a hot pastrami sandwich? Yes. You want cheese? Yes. And I'll have a, uh, the chili burger. And that's to go. What's the, what's the weight right now? Uh, I'll be a little, because we have a lot of it. A lot of right Little is like, how much? Uh, 20 minutes. Oof. Okay. okay. And what, chili burger? Yep, chili burger. Chili cheese burger? Yeah, chili cheese burger, yeah, for sure. Do they come with fries or do we have to order fries? We have to order fries. Okay, let's order a uh, share Single order. Fry, of fries. A large fry. You know, I've lived in Santa Cruz for a long time. Never came here. Yeah. Yeah, how long has this restaurant been open? Uh, 57. Really? Yeah. Wow. It actually turned out kind of nice that we had to sit here and wait for our food because I feel like it just mellowed me out to just come out here and sit in the sun like all of a sudden my day went from like hectic and fast to just slow and mellow I'm just yeah, waiting for my food I think once we thought through all the things that we have to do on the bus and realizing it's not that much yeah we're not in as much of a rush as we thought we would be we're fine and we're, we're going to have 40 minutes to get the bus ready, which is plenty of time, but we're two minutes from where we need to be. Yeah, yeah literally right across the street behind the Jeep over there is the entrance into Seacliff Park. So this was perfect. We've been driving past this place every day on our way in and out of Seacliff Park. And I was, I'm always like, we should stop and eat at that snow white drive-in place sometime this place is old school there's no school like the old school we're gonna have to eat kind of quickly and get back because it's taking more than 20 minutes for the food right now oh is it yeah. what time is it it's 11 11 22 now get back start the engine do all the things get okay we here. got this I think so. we're pros at the i'm not worried about now. it but we're gonna have to eat fast Thanks, buddy. Ready, Yep. Mmm. These fries are fantastic. They're so crispy, crunchy. I love it. Hot, too. Mm-hmm. All right. Mmm. Worth the wait. We now have 30 minutes to get out of here. We can do it. Oh, we can so. eat and get out of here in 30 minutes. I think so. I know it. There's even bigger. Go in and see if the cat's inside, lock the door, and start the your engines. Let's do this. Let's do this. Ready? We're leaving Seacliff State Park and I'm just now realizing I never really gave you a whole tour of what it looked like here. It's all just one strip of RV parks, of RV spaces. And way down there are the spaces with hookups. The spaces right here are without hookups. And it's really a relatively small park. So I think we'll probably be here again next year as well. <laughs>